We're going to be looking at the uh, first of many hypothesis tests, and this one is called a one proportion Z test. And uh, let's set up the scenario here first. Ba basically, what we have is we have a large national airline. It claims that 90% uh, of lost luggage is returned to owners within 24 hours. So this consumer group goes out and investigates. They find that 103 out of 122 uh, passengers get their luggage back by the next day. And by the way, that works out to be about 84.4%. So the question is, does this cast doubt on the airline's claim? And so obviously, yeah, it's lower than 90%, but is it statistically significantly less than 90%? So here's how we do this here. What we're, the step one is, since it's a hypothesis test, is we actually have two different types of hypotheses. One of them is what we call the null hypothesis, which is H, capital H, the sub-zero here. And then we have one called the alternate, which is H with a capital A, down below their subscript. And uh, what happens is, is you need to define your hypotheses. Now, null means nothing or, or void. So basically what it means is there's nothing wrong with what they're saying. It, it, it is what it has been. I know it's lower than 90%, but we're saying basically it's still pretty darn close to 90%. So that's our null hypothesis. P equals 0 0.90, where P is the proportion of luggage returned. So luggage returned. Now, over here, what would be our alternate hypothesis is if in order for us to cast doubt on the claim, it has to be lower than. If it's higher than, that's not going to be a big difference because that means it's at least 90%. But lower is where we're going to have a problem here. So our alternate hypothesis is going to be P is less than 90%. So those are your hypotheses. We have our null, we have our alternate, and the null is always, uh, it's still what it was, and the alternate will change depending on the scenario here. And we always have to define P over here as well. Now let's go to uh, conditions. And the conditions should look very familiar. They're the, they're the same as what we've been using for confidence intervals. One is about independence. And uh, obviously, whether one person has their luggage returned does not affect another. You know, maybe within a flight, but other than that, it really shouldn't, you know, have any impact whatsoever. It's a representative sample. Uh, and 122 is definitely less than 10% of all passengers who lost luggage, especially on a national airline like this. Now, for successes and failures, what we do is, since in our null hypothesis, we're assuming that 90% are returned, we're going to use 90%. We don't use what actually happened in our sample. So if you take 90% of 122, you're going to wind up with about 110 people would have their luggage returned within 24 hours. That's definitely uh, greater than 10. And 10% of that would be about 12. So definitely here we meet conditions here and we can go ahead and proceed with what we call a one proportion Z test. All right, so now comes the meat of actually proving this here once we've met conditions and written our hypotheses. We're gonna go ahead and actually run the test right now. So once again, we do know P hat was 103 out of 122 or 0.844. We also know that P equals 0.90. So when we do our normal curve here, Whatever P is, that's going to be our mean. So we're going to have a normal curve here with a mean of 0 0.90. So I'm going to go ahead and write that in here. P equals 0 0.90. Uh, P hat would be over here somewhere. So that would be on the, on the left somewhere. P hat is 0 0.844. We're going to go ahead and, and shade that in. And really at this point, what we're missing here is we need a standard deviation. So you calculate a standard deviation in this case by taking the square root sample size goes on the bottom of our fraction that's 122 and because once again we're assuming this still to be true we're going to use 0.9 up here not 0.844 so that's the chance of success and failure and when you run the numbers on this you should get about 0 0.0272 and I went ahead and went out four places there but three would usually be fine so that's going to be our standard deviation 0 0.0272 and then we do what we've always done, which is calculate a z-score next. So that would be 0.844 is p hat, subtract p, and then go ahead and divide by our standard deviation. And when you do that, you should get something around negative 2.059, depending on how you round it. Next up, we would always use uh, normal CDF now to find out what part of the curve that is. So normal CDF, and we do negative 99, comma, negative 2.059. Go ahead and write that out. So we'd say the probability that Z is less than negative 
is, now when you do this on the calculator, normal CDF, I got 0 0.020. So this number represents something. It represents something we call in a hypothesis, hypothesis test called a p-value. And what it is, this is the chance. So basically there's a 2% chance of getting our sample results, which were 103 out of 122 people having their luggage returned in time if 90% of luggage really is returned on time. And since this is a very low percentage here, and somebody just basically decided, although it doesn't have to be, that 5% is the marker for this. So if it's under 5%, we reject what we call the null hypothesis. So we would reject if this p-value is less than 5%, and obviously it is. Now what if it wasn't? We would do what's called fail to reject. In other words, we can't rule out the null hypothesis, but we definitely don't have enough evidence to, to rule it out at this point. So if it's greater than 5%, we fail to reject. So like I said, this is obviously less than 5%. So in our conclusion here, what we say is we fail to reject. I'm sorry, what am I saying here? We actually reject, excuse me there, it's less than 5%. So we reject HO because it's less than 5%, so we say since our p-value is less than 5%, and anytime we reject our null hypothesis, it means we have strong evidence here. So there is strong evidence that the alternate hypothesis actually is true. So if you recall, going back here, this is the alternate hypothesis right over here. So how could we say this in words? So what we would say is there is strong evidence the actual rate of return luggage is lower than the airline's claim of 90%. So yeah, we knew that it actually was lower than 90%, but statistically speaking, is it statistically lower than 90%? And the answer is yes. So what we do then is we reject the null hypothesis and the reason, once again, is because there's only 2% of getting our sample results if the null hypothesis were true. And then we can come to our conclusion here, and, and that's really it. So uh, that's it for a one-proportion z-test.